Good morning. God is good all the time. Welcome to service this morning. You bless us with your presence. We welcome those who are watching over the YouTube feed, and uh, we just hope this service is a blessing to you, and you bless us with your presence. We are grateful to have Caitlin Rager singing uh, this morning with us, so thank you, Caitlin, for sharing your gifts of music. We have a couple of children that are heading off the camp or off to scout camp this week. We have uh, for uh, five young women heading off to confirmation camp, and uh, they are, let's see, Sophia Diddy and Lily Diddy, Kelly Bastion, Mackenzie Curry, and Madison Curry, and uh, Cody Rager is heading off to Philmont to church camp uh, today. So we'll be lifting those uh, young people up in our prayers this morning. Um, let's see, virtual vacation Bible school will begin next Sunday the 27th, but Shannon Bastion will be in the Narthex for those who want to register yet, uh, children or grandchildren, and if they want to pick up the bags of the crafts and the different items that they need for Vacation Bible School. So Shannon will be in the Narthex following both services this morning. Uh, I don't have any committees. The executive committee will be meeting Thursday night by Zoom, uh, and I'll send that link out to everyone in the executive committee celebrations this week uh, birthdays Mary Ann Ebersole has a birthday today and Grace Swanger has a birthday on Tuesday and Gloria Rathfin on Wednesday are any of those folks here no and then uh, wedding anniversaries Robert and Joan Johnston on the 20th uh, today Martell and Geraldine Scheidler on the 21st tomorrow and Robert and Susan Workman on the 24th. Are any of those folks here? No. Anybody we missed? Birthdays. Liz. My daughter Lynn and my grandson Alex are visiting. Well, welcome. I would have gotten out of Texas this week myself if I <laughs> lived there. It's 127 degrees or something like that. So, well, welcome. We're glad you are here to bask in the warmth of Pennsylvania and the but um, we're grateful to have you here. Thanks, Liz. Um, let's see. The memorial service for Shirley Van Winkle will be this coming Friday here at Zion. Uh, there will be a time to greet the family from 10 to 11 o'clock in the parlor service at 11 o'clock and in, in, in earnment for both Shirley and her husband Glenn will be at uh, Fort Indian Town Gap immediately following the service. They are planning to have a luncheon afterward after the earnment back here at Zion. So. In our prayer life this week, we add Jody Elvey, that is the brother-in-law of Maxine Elvey, uh, who's been diagnosed with colon cancer. We add Thursa Weath, who is a, a friend of mine, but they are also uh, joining the church here. She is cancer, and Bob Elliott, uh, who is in rehab. And then we are taking off our prayer list, uh, Mike Ferdiga. Uh, we continue to pray for Diane Schubert, for Tom Dirk, Rod Holland, Reverend Sharon Blesser, Joyce Miller, and Ginny Long. Those are, oh, happy Father's Day to the fathers in our congregation. We need to do a blessing for them, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the men in our lives, for the fathers that we have known, the fathers we have not known, those who have served that role as a father in our lives. We're grateful for their love. We mourn their loss if they are no longer with us. We pray that they will be remembered and honored and loved, not only today, but throughout our lives. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the prelude.
I invite you to please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. Let's just take a moment and reflect on our week and the ways that we perhaps have not loved our neighbors as we should or not loved God as we should. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teaching and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us all through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. The first reading is from the chapter 38 of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Who was stretched a line? Who or who stretched a line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garments and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bonds for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far shall you come and no farther and here shall your proud waves be stopped. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. We will read responsively from Psalm 107. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of God. Gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. Then God spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths. Their souls melted away in their peril. They staggered the field like drunkards, and all their skill was of no avail. Then in their trouble they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You stilled the storm to a whisper, and silenced the waves of the sea. 
Then were they glad when it grew calm, when you guided them to the harbor they desired. Let them give thanks to you, O Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people, in the council of the elders. Let them sing. Hallelujah. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance. In afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by impurity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. Word of God, word of life. I invite you to please stand as you are able and let us read together the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. The Holy Gospel. Sorry about that. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him and that, with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Please be seated. Gird your loins. I love that phrase from the book of Job. Gird your loins. We, we have a sense of what it means. We, knows, we know what that, in our, in our society today, back in the days of ancient Near East, it had a different meaning. You know, back then they wore gowns similar to my all that I am wearing for everyday wear, long flowing tunics and gowns, and they would cinch it up with a belt around the middle, like this cincture that I'm wearing. It was nice fashion, nice and cool, and breezy kind of 
flowing, comfortable. It was good for everyday wear. It was bad for fighting. As you can predict, the hem, I don't know how you women wear long dresses, I'm telling you, because I can't even get up and down the sacristy without tripping and breaking my nose on the steps from this alb. So when the ancient Hebrews would fight the Philistines, the men would take the hem of the tunic and they would pull it between their legs and up towards the back, and then they would wrap it around and tie it in the front. They would make it like a pair of ancient shorts which was great for battle, it was great for fighting. So to gird your loins means to get ready for battle. Get ready for hard work. The NIV, the New International Version of the Bible translated as brace yourself like a man. It fits perfectly for what was happening in Job, you know. For 35 chapters, Job was complaining to God. He was arguing with his friends. He was in this verbal battle. And finally, God, who had said nothing throughout this whole 35 chapters, God finally speaks. He comes out of the whirlwind, and he says to Job, in essence, quit complaining and brace yourself like a man. Now, any time a voice comes out of a whirlwind would be scary enough. And then we think about these disciples who were on this boat, who most of them were fishermen, so they were familiar with the sea, and they have this storm, this virtual whirlwind that comes upon them in the middle of the night. And Jesus says to them something very similar, brace yourselves like men. What are some situations in your life that you found you needed to brace yourself? I think of the roller coasters I have ridden in my life where you are going up that first big hill and you crest the top and what do you do? What do I do? I brace myself for the fall, right? Or perhaps when you're teaching your children to drive, you learn how to brace how to, sorry, Caitlin, I'm not going to, no. Yeah, you brace yourself, right, for that crash you just see coming that never hopefully does. Or when a friend calls you and tells you, are you sitting down? You brace yourself for bad news. You know, the disciples would have had many experiences in their time with Jesus. They would have had to brace themselves, you know. When uh, Jesus turned to them and said, you feed 5,000 men and women and children with your meager resources. Or again, in the middle of this raging storm. It had to be an experience that they were just not familiar with. Bad enough that they wake Jesus in the middle. Now, one of the more interesting sentences in this gospel text is a sentence that I think, I think it's just a throwaway line, but I think it's important. And that line is the one that says, there were other boats with them. What do you suppose this means? Besides the fact there were other boats with them. Is it significant? Well, I like to think that it is very significant. It doesn't matter who were in the other boats. It just matters that they were there. There were other people caught in the same dark and stormy night as Snoopy would write. There were others who were being tossed about the sea, other boats that were being swamped, others who would have felt as if their lives were in danger. And then it happened, right? The winds stopped. The sea became smooth as glass. The dark and stormy night became the perfect night to be on the sea. And you have to wonder what the people in the other boats would have been thinking because they would not have known that it was Jesus who stilled the storm. Without knowing it, these people benefited from the actions of Jesus. 
just by being in proximity. So what's the implication for us in our text? It's true that like the disciples in the boat with Jesus, we become preoccupied with what is happening in our own boat, our own sense of survival, our own struggles, our own fears, our own illnesses, our own troubles and changes and storms. Why should we care about what's happening in other people's boats? Well, this text reminds us, or it helps us to remember, that we can't forget about those in other boats, because if we do, I guarantee you Jesus doesn't forget about what's happening in their boats. Those in the other boats also will experience the acts of Jesus just by being in proximity to Jesus. That means then that even if our minds and our efforts are not particularly focused on others, the other boats in our lives, the other boats around our church, they, those people, will still be impacted by their proximity to us when we act when we live in response to the unmerited grace of Jesus Christ. You know, with the actions that our church council and this congregation has authorized over the pa past few weeks, you know, actions like selling the properties on Rosanna Street, the actions to begin the repairing and the refurbishing of the physical structure here at Zion, you know, we are in need of girding our loins. We are in need of getting ready for hard work. It's already happening. People are looking at how we will begin to put into motion the things that have been voted on. And we are faced with the question, well, what will our ministries look like during and then when we are completed with these actions? The people around us will still receive the blessings that will emanate from this congregation, its individual members, our collective actions, just through our mere presence. And you might say, well, how? Well, first, the fact that we will continue to gather each and every Sunday morning for worship means that we will continue to pray for those in our midst, those who are in earshot of my words right now, those across the country, those around the world, when we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ, those in pain, those that are homeless, those that are experiencing loss or grief or pain in any way, they are benefiting by being in proximity to Jesus. And they may not necessarily know that we're praying for them. And when we gather every Sunday, to hear the word preached and to hear the words read and to receive the sacrament. You know, we never know what we might hear in the words that we read in Scripture, the words that are preached, the experience that you have with the presence of Jesus in that bread and wine of communion. It calls us to action. It, it calls us to be transformed. All of the means of grace that we offer through the church are to lead us to live lives of greater righteousness. This then will lead us to living lives where we are focused on how we treat the others in our lives. And they may recognize that it is because we love Jesus that they experience the love and the mercy of Jesus, and yet may not hear it themselves, but feel it in ways that we treat them or minister to them. You know, the others in the boats around Jesus realized the storm suddenly ceased, and they would have wondered why. People that come in contact with you or the ministries of this congregation will experience a love that they may receive that will be a momentary cessation of their storms and their lives. And they'll be grateful for the how, even if they don't understand the why. 
So whatever happens from this moment forward as we move through this summer of change, whatever happens will require that we first gird our loins and we first prepare for work. First the work against evil and against fear and against worry, but we also prepare for the work of the church that begins with prayer. We surround ourselves with prayer because as we see across our nations, even just getting up in the morning or just coming to church can be a life-threatening experience because evil will not stop even at the doors of the church. So we must gird our loins. No matter where we are, no matter what is happening, no matter if the seas are glassy and calm or the storms are raging around, are raging around us, we need to be constantly praying for the love and mercy and peace of Christ to fill our boats. You do know the Latin word for boat is novice. That is where we get the word nave, which is the center part of the worshiping space in this building. So you are sitting in the nave, and in many churches, not so much here, but in many churches, when you look up, you feel as if you're sitting in a boat that's turned upside down. What happens in this boat will either have a positive or a diminishing impact on those boats around us, the lives of the people who need to hear more about Jesus, who need to experience more Jesus in their lives. And so I pray that our boat, that we call Zion, and of course the individual boats within this congregation, will continue to be places where the Holy Spirit does brace us for the hard work, the hard work of love for others, and the hard work for battling evil. Amen? Amen. Amen. I invite you to please stand as you are able. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us come before the triune God of prayer. O God, you have gathered your people from the east and the west, north and south. We pray for the missions of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be known to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You laid the foundations of the earth, and the waters are the tomb of creation. The morning stars and all creation shout for joy. We pray for your blessed, blessed creation, that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We keep watch over all nations. We pray for countries experiencing violence, hunger, and unrest. Guide worldwide and local communities, organizations in their effort to establish safety and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are close to the brokenhearted, the sick, and those in distress. We pray for those who are experiencing oppression. Liberate them from the system that binds. Remove the barriers that separate us from one another. We lift, you to the, we lift to you these our prayer list and, name, and those in names in the silence of our heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of ages, we ask your blessing upon those who are celebrating birthdays this week, including Mary Ann, Grace and Gloria, and the wedding anniversaries of Robert and Joanne, Martel and Geraldine, and Robert and Susan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You dwell with us in this faithful, faithful community. We pray for our leaders and elders. Grant them knowledge, patience, and kindness, that through their leadership, you may be exalted in, their, in this assembly. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of strength, we pray for our youth attending confirmation camps and Scott camps this week. Protect them and guide them in their journeys. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Those attending camps are Cody Rager, Sophia Diddy, Kelly Bastion, Lily Diddy, Mackenzie Curry, and Madison Curry. Your love endures in all situations. And this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or wish to be fathers, for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their father, and for fathers who have lost children. Bless it and strengthen them as we lift our hearts to you, O oh God. We trust in your abiding grace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we set the communion table.
I invite you to please stand as you are able. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day, you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts. Ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and at all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet table where Christ gives himself as food and drink. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. We do have the communion cups in the back. If you forgot to pick one one up on your way in, we have ushers in the back that will bring you one. I don't see anybody with their hand raised. We start with the wafer portion. We do this as a community. We take that covering off. I just ask that you hold that wafer up with me. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And 
we do the same with the wine or the grape juice. Hold that up. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Receive this blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. With the Lord's help, we will. You may be seated, actually. Well, first, we should give Caitlin a, a, some appreciation for sharing her gift with us this morning. Uh, Dan tells me it's a long postlude, so you're welcome to leave if you would like to.